Welcome to the You Need More Money podcast. I'm your host, Matt Monero, where I come to you every week from my studio in Dallas, Texas. The single most important decision I made, yes, it is a decision. It isn't luck. It doesn't just come to you without work. The single most important decision I made to fix my money situation and really catapult it from good to excellent was when I physically and mentally made the decision to change my network. And since that time, I have been fascinated with people who are really good at it. Because some people are really good at it. And some people it comes naturally, and some people they have to work at it. I'm one of those that had to work at it. It didn't come natural to me. The life of the party, the gregarious uh, person that draws energy is not who I am. Um, And that impacts you negatively when you're trying to build a network, and you need to build a network. All that said, let me introduce my guest today, Travis Chappelle. Welcome to the show. Matt, thanks so much for having me on, man. Really excited to uh, jump into this conversation with you. Thank you, and so am I. I brought Travis on because Travis has his own podcast called Build Your Network Podcast. You can also follow him at buildyournetwork.co. But Travis is a guy who is spending time helping other people build their network. Travis, why is that important? Oh man, you know it, it's funny, Matt. When I when I was looking for a couple of things to start my podcast with, I knew that I wanted. I, I knew that I liked the medium, right? Like I, I knew that I knew that the that podcasting was the thing that I wanted to get into. And uh, my my entire background is in uh, is in door to door sales and uh, retail sales and stuff like that. And so um, that, that's what I was looking originally to do. I was like, oh, I'll just do a sales podcast, you know. And then I, I went and searched on iTunes, and there's only like what thirty five thousand <laughs> shows that talk about sales. Um, so I, uh, I I immediately was like, okay, well, that's probably not going to fly. Um, if you could go listen to Grant Cardone in your ear talk about sales for thirty minutes versus me probably going to listen to Grant Cardone. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? There's got to be some Something else that I can do, and then I, I looked back and I was like, "What's something that? What's something that is is very very important that I would contribute a lot of you know my successes to?" And the thing that was just glaringly obvious was was networking because any time I had ever seen a bump in, in, in success, you know, like the a big income jump or um, or something like that, it had been because I had met a person who made a connection for me or. Uh, was a mentor to me or taught me something that I didn't know. And uh, I, I could really look back and trace almost every dollar I've ever made back to just being um, with people and, and building actual genuine relationships with people. And uh, I remember I remember when I first started into sales and I was horrible at it. And, um, and like you said, you know, that was something that was not natural to me. I treated it like, a I treated networking and stuff like a, like an in-person cold call, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so I figured out immediately that wasn't, you know, going to work. And then I worked on, worked on, worked on, and worked on it. And, um, um, and then I ended up getting, you know, pretty decent at it. So I was like, you know what? Okay. Let me, let me, let me explore this a little bit more. And, uh, so to answer your question, the, the, uh, the main thing is that I believe networking is the single most important thing anybody can do in their business and their in their life and their career um, to uh, advance yourself forward, to move yourself forward. It's such a key component of personal development. I think a lot of the times people neglect it for whatever reason. No, absolutely. I mean, people are spending so much time working on their weaknesses, uh, which I don't spend any time on. Um, yeah. They really have no idea what their superpower is. And somewhere in between is this sort of X factor called your network in which you can make a few phone calls and be able to skip rungs on the ladder of success. And yes. I didn't do that. I've been in business 23 years. I started from zero. I mean, it is absolutely the school of hard knocks uh, success story in, in that capacity. Uh, but, mm. but it's also, and I'm not afraid to talk about this, it's also an example of pure failure too right? I'm 48 years old. I've done well for myself and my taking care of my wife and family and many employees and vendors and all that sort of stuff. I'm very proud of that. But I should have done it a decade earlier. I should have been where I am today at 38 years old. And the only reason I'm not is because I put no emphasis on building my network. 
you know, I love, I love that insight because um, and I, love, and I love the way that you put that. I'm going to start stealing that and using that for my show, man, sure if you don't thing. mind. Um, I don't even know what I just yes. said, but steal away. <laughs> yeah. Um, skipping rungs on the ladder of mm. success is, is a fantastic way to put it. I, I usually say, I usually say it this way. I usually say it's going to help you uh, shorten your runway. Mm. Um, and uh, both of those are an accurate uh, description of, of what networking allows you to do. And um, I think that was a fantastic way to put it. Um, because, you know, one of the questions I ask just about every guest that comes on my show, Matt, is do you believe that what you know or who you know is more important and why? And, you know, it's funny. I thought I thought that that was going to be like um, when, I, when I came up with that question, I was like, this is going to be like a lead question. Like this is going to be the question that everybody just like immediately they're like, oh, who you know? And then we move on and talk about networking for 30 minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I thought was going to happen. But ended up happening is like I've gotten so many different answers for that question. I've gotten like, you know, oh, it's what you know. And I've gotten, oh, it's a combination of the two of them. Oh, it's what you know with who you know. It's who you know with what you know. It's combined. Like, and then I get like all these different variations like that I was just not, I was not expecting. So my answer to that question is who you know. Um, I have not changed my position, but I have changed my reasoning. And I think my reason is pretty good. And it's exactly what we were just talking about. It's because the who you know allows you to skip rungs on the ladder. Is what you know important? Yes. Should you be working on your skill sets? Yes. Um, will will connections bring you all of, of, of the success in your life? No. You have to be good at what you do. You have to be competent. You have to you know uh, work on your skill sets, all that kind of stuff. But if you work really hard at who you know, your what will always increase in direct proportion to your who. Whereas if you work on what you know, your who will always be behind your what. It's not going to rise naturally mm -hmm. with it. It's going to rise a little bit, but not as much. Great so uh, if, you, if you work on who you know, your what you know is going to rise with you. If you're always spending time with people who are in a league above you, so to speak, that are on a different level, then your mindset, your knowledge, your wisdom is going to shift that direction naturally, mm -hmm. or you're not going to be able to hang out with that person. If you, if your what doesn't change, you know, if you're hanging out with those who's, then you're not gonna be able to hang out with those who's anymore because they're looking for people to hang out with them that are shifting their mindset to become more like them. Does that make sense? Dude, we're talking, man. I love this stuff. I mean, I cannot stress the importance of what you and I are talking about today. It's gonna, I promise you if, if it continues in the direction it's going, it's gonna be one, of, be one of my favorite episodes because at the end of the day, I just do my podcast because it's fun for me. Right. I, <laughs> yeah. I get to, I get to, I mean, it has, there's no financial impact to my podcast. I just enjoy right. meeting uh, like-minded people, hashtag like-minded. So, so let, let's just talk about this for a second, Travis, because I'd like to get your insight. It's actually a very complicated, twisty road in building a network. And, and here's why, in my view, and I'd like to your interpretation of this. It's not difficult making the connection it's difficult keeping the connection and the mm. further you move up that food chain with more powerful and rich people who we kind of think that's who the connection's supposed to be with right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you what what i have found and uh i found this without knowing it about myself right i found this out and everyone around me was like no shit sherlock that's you right <laughs> It's, it's the successful people don't need anything from you because okay. if they did need it, they'd go out and get it. <laughs> that's who, right. that's yeah. what got them successful. And so that adds a real twist of how do you stay on someone who you think you should how do you yeah. stay on their radar screen? So before we go there, let's talk about the basics. How does someone determine whether their network is strong or weak? Oh man, it's it's easy. Um, did did was there a large amount of growth in between last year and this year in your business and your life and your uh, in your you know relationships? Was there was there a jump? If not, then you didn't up level. Right. It's all about up leveling. The first time I, I realized, recognized this principle, because it is a principle, it's, it's a law. If you put yourself in this crowd, you will raise up to their level. You, you, and it's funny because you can't go much higher 
than the crowd that you're hanging out with, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you can like raise and catch up to them really quick, but then you're not going to exceed them unless you up level one more time. Um, and the first time I realized this principle, Matt, was um, was a simple example here was when I was a kid and uh, we bought a ping pong table and I started playing my dad at ping pong. And my dad was just way better than me. He's a, he's a great ping pong player still. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he would just kick my butt every time we, we'd play. And, and, and it was, and I'm, I'm very, very competitive. And so I hate, I hate losing. Right. So we got this ping pong table. He beat me every time. So I would spend like, you know, when I was a kid, an hour or two a day, just like playing ping pong by myself in the garage, you know? And, um, I, I went from absolutely horrible at ping pong in about a year to being actually pretty good for, you know, how old I was. And, uh, but it's funny because, I, I raised from really, really horrible to just as good as my dad in about a year and a half. And it's been eight, nine, 10, 12 years since that time. And I'm still not better than my dad. We're still about the same skill level. Mm. So it's really funny when you look back because it's like, look, my skill level like shot up like exponentially because I was playing somebody that was exponentially better than me. But I never, I never, ever, ever got way better than him because I never up leveled again to play against somebody that was better than both of us. Does that make sense? Of course. Plus he's a competitive guy. So he raised his game as well. You through the competition you gave to him, made him a better player as well. Right. And we can work on our games together, but we're only going to be moving a little bit inch. Like we're only moving inches, right? Because, because we're about the same skill level. So we can work on our game. We can get better, but we're only going to be moving up a little bit. And it's the same exact thing in your, in your life. So if you can look back and and see and and take an audit of the past couple of years, and you haven't seen like a major up level, a major level increase, then you're doing something wrong. And you got to be, you got to be actively pursuing people that are above your level because they will raise you up to where you need to be. I love that. I, uh, I use the terminology, um, never play down, always play up. And to me, it's a sports analogy, right? Of, you know, if, if you're on the C team, you want to get on the B team. If you're on the B team, you want to get on the A team. If you're on the A team, you don't want to play on the B team. I mean, that's just the way it is, right? You always want to play up and never want to play down. So I love that. So a, a litmus test that you just provided for the audience is how do you know whether your network needs, needs work? Is there growth year over year? And, Mm -hmm. uh, if there, if there is growth, then maybe your network is assisting you in that. In fact, you're you're of the opinion yeah. that of course it is. And if I, I'm I'm of the opinion if there's a if, if there's a large amount of growth, then oh. you're doing something right. So not small like, increments. You're saying right. you're saying big jumps. Yeah, because if it's just like it, small increments can happen from your what right? Small increments can happen from like, I took this online course and figured something out. And now I can, I can grow a little bit in my business this year. I'm talking about not just numbers in your business. I'm talking about personal development overall, like your growth as a person. Can you look back and see, did I jump like a couple levels this sure. year? Cool. And if that answer is yes, then I think a hundred percent you were around the right people. Cool. I love that. Um, so let's then move into the strategy, if you would. So I've taken mm-hmm. the litmus test. I've realized that I, I'm flattened. I've plateaued. What do I do? How do yeah. I start? What, how, do, I, do I write a letter? Do I start liking them on social? Do I, do I, how do I get to these people? Great question. So first of all, um, you want to get clarity. Um, gaining clarity is what separates the really successful people from the non-successful people. Um, and Brennan Burchard has his book, uh, High Performance Habits. He goes into in, into clarity. One of one of those high performance habits is seeking clarity. And so, um, I'm a big believer in seeking clarity. So I think that that's where you're going to start when you're building your network as well. So, for me, what it is is you have to sit down and figure out whatever it is for your business. You need to write out a, a, a list, um, a dream 100 is, is what we call it, uh, write out a dream 100, a list of people that you want to connect with, whether it's, you know, uh, an ideal client list, or are these the people that you want to work with in your, in your business as a, as a, you know, a coach or consultant? Um, or for me, for me, it's because I, my dream 100 is a list of people I want to interview on my podcast, right? So after I write out that list of people, um, which is going to be different for everybody as far as like what that list will look like. But after you write out the list of people, now you have clarity on what to do from there. Because now you can ask yourself a couple of questions about these people. How old are they? Where do they hang out? online you know what, what facebook groups are they in what that i can join to get around them what uh, what events are they going to you know next year in, in vegas that i can that i can be at um you know what 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 businesses do they give business to? like what you, you can break down you can ask a lot of questions to help you get around those yeah. people 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I would, that's where I, I recommend all, whenever I'm coaching somebody, that's where I recommend you start. Hey, just start with your dream 100 and we'll go from there because you need to get some clarity on what you want to happen. By the way, is that, is that your, uh, is that your primary business is the coaching of people on how to improve their network? It's actually not my primary business. It is it is uh, the business that's associated with my podcast. Got it. Um, but I actually own a a door to door team. Uh, we 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 sell uh, water water filtration systems and stuff like that door to door. And I have a team of guys that I've I've trained to go sell those products and everything like that. So gotcha. Okay. That's my cool. main my main business is is called Revive Water. But uh, my my podcast is where I spend a lot of my time. I got it because I actually believe as and I'm a huge believer in in you know. Uh, is in very narrow and very deep niches. And that's how I built my business. But as far as the coaching world, you know, I think that's a very interesting play for the coaching mm -hmm. world on, on literally being able to help people figure out how do they develop their network and coaching them on it. Uh, I love what you just said. About, I'm taking copious notes here. I'm not a huge note taker on my podcast, but I'm taking major notes today. I'm really <laughs> enjoying it. Um, but I like this dream 100 list. This is basically your hit list, your target list. These are, these are the, the influencers that you want to get closer to. And this mm -hmm. concept of clarity is so interesting because my entire life, I just uh, not too, six months ago did a TEDx talk called The Torch in which I torched my business. And I didn't care if the business went to zero, but I was going to burn it up, tear it up, rebuild it from, from the ground up if I had to. We Luckily, we didn't have to, right? Solely on mission statement and four core values because of the crystal clarity that I had of what the business was supposed to be and that busting my ass for 23 years to get it to 100 million bucks a year and, and make me a lot of money, I got away from all of it. And I said, mm -hmm. I'm willing to tear it all back down to get crystal clarity on what the next 23 years are going to look like. It yeah. has made all the difference, not in the world, just me. Hmm. It's changed my outlook on the planet by getting crystal clarity. So I didn't know Burchard was a big clarity guy. I know who he is. I haven't read any books or gone to any of his. My chiropractor is a huge Burchard freakazoid fan. <laughs> but this concept of clarity is so important. Yes, yes, definitely. And if you're, if you're listening and you have not picked up a copy of his book, I, I highly recommend it. High Performance Habits was probably was probably probably the best book I read in, in 2017. Um, there's uh, it's very, very, very good. I, I like Brendan Burchard's style because he doesn't he doesn't just, you know, throw out motivational things, you know, like he, he has years and years and years of research and um, studies and surveys and all this stuff that go behind what he's telling you to do. So I'm, I'm a really, I'm, I'm, I'm a stickler on that kind of stuff. You know, like I'm, I'm, I don't, you know, I like hearing people's opinions just because I like connecting with people. But as far as like what I'm going to apply into my life, like I don't want to hear your opinion. I want to hear like what's actually working. Like yeah. tell me something that I can put into my business that's actually like yeah, people are doing on a daily basis that yeah. works. Right? Yeah, I, so, I talk uh, about this in my book because we talk about in, in You Need More Money. I talk about the importance of core values and, and getting clear, right? But yeah. then there's an additional takeaway that the audience needs to know about. I'd like your opinion on this. I installed what I call the doorman. And literally everything that happens in my life, and I don't care if it's family dinner night with my kids or going to the game with my kids or anything that happens in my office, it must clear the doorman principle. And basically the doorman is this fictitious character that I put in front of my core values. And everything that comes across my desk, every email that comes in, every phone call that I take, every reply that I might make on social media, is connected to the dorm. Does it get past the doorman? What do you hmm. think about that? Does I think that's... Do, do, have you heard people talk about this doorman principle, the protector of the core values of the clarity? Um, I have not heard it articulated that way. Um, I've heard different, you know, obviously uh, variations of that, but I love that. I think that, you know, when you, when you have so many demands on your time, you have to guard your time. And the whole reason to seek clarity is to, is so that in five years, you're not just like floating out in the ocean, right? Clar clarity is what guides you so that you can take the necessary steps to make sure you end up where you actually want to end up. And it's so important to, to actually, to sit, to sit back and take 
a you know daily or weekly look at at what you're what you've done this past week and does that align with my principles is 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 that what's going to get me what i want to have accomplished in four or five years from now and if it doesn't do it then don't do it <laughs> like stop doing it you know why are we why are you waste so much time when you just do something else that actually is going to support what you want to accomplish travis i'm telling you there's a lot of people there's a lot of people who, who are going to not really get what we're saying here because they are so caught up in this hustle and the grind and, you know, just have to get to the next level. And as much as I love Cardone and he and I are very good friends, the 10x mindset, right, where mm-hmm. we just have to we just have to crush everything. And, and I would challenge everyone after me doing that, living my life and business career for 20 years, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I'm unbelievably more successful and more productive when I actually don't. 10 exit when mm. i have crystal clarity on what it is that i want and then i achieve one two three four things in that direction every day and then over the course of a week or a month or a quarter or over a year you end up achieving an unbelievable amount of stuff yeah yeah so true and uh, two quick books on that uh four hour work week uh from tim ferris and the one thing by gary keller yeah. uh, on jay papazon if you if you haven't read those two I've fantastic read books i hate both those books I hate those <laughs> books. I particularly yeah. hate. I particularly yeah. <laughs> hate the four-hour work week um, because um, I I don't believe you get rich working four hours a week. I think it's the oh, biggest. No. I like the book for the clarity, the delegation, the managing of your time, and interpreting that. But the but the mindset of doing less really infuriates me. Yeah, no, uh, exactly what you just said is the only reason I brought it up because yeah. of the, the the principles that he goes into about managing your time. Exactly, because that's exactly what you and I were just talking about with people that you know. A lot of people will be like, "Well, I just got to hustle," and they're working eighty hours a week, ninety hours a week. They never see their family. They're never, you know, and 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 their businesses aren't even, they're not 10 Xing. They're putting in 10 X effort, but they're not seeing 10 X results. And it's because you're spending time doing the wrong things. Yeah. Whereas you could cut your workload in half um, and actually focus on the things that are going to make you productive to reach the goals that you want to accomplish um, in, you know, such a smaller amount of time, which is exactly, you know, what you're saying that you were doing. And uh, so many people, I think just, they, they don't take, they don't sit back and take that, um, take that look at their business to see what those key, those few things are that they need to accomplish in order to get that bigger goal accomplished. Okay, my friend, let's rock and roll on a few strategies here. Help me. I've identified my dream 100. I know where they are and where they hang out and what their habits are. How do I get on their radar screen? Great question. So especially with influencers, uh, you need to uh, uh, do a couple of things, add value and be a proponent of what they're putting out. Um, So I'll I'll just give you a quick example. Uh, Are you familiar with uh, Entrepreneur on Fire and John Lee Dupamis? Yes. Okay. So uh, John was, uh, John is one of my mentors. And uh, so rewind like a year and a half ago, I knew zero people in this space, zero people. And um, I knew zero things about podcasting. And so I I knew that I wanted to change that. I knew that if I wanted to have a successful podcast that I had to go get around somebody who had had a successful podcast. And so I actually was, I was following John on Instagram and he put some story out there about a a mastermind he's holding at his house in Puerto Rico. And I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to try to make that happen. And it was a little bit of a stretch and it was, it wasn't a cheap, it wasn't a, a small amount of money for this, you know, three day weekend, but I dropped the cash and flew out to Puerto Rico, went there for three days. Um, and, and the, the crazy thing, the, the, the number one thing that changed, you know, my, the, my life over the last year, the only reason why I've been able to, to talk to so many awesome people on my podcast is this one mindset shift that I took into that weekend in Puerto Rico. And that is, um, I did not go into that weekend thinking, what can I get out of this? I did not go into that weekend thinking I just dropped eight grand to be here. What, what, what am I going to get from this? It's going to make, that's going to make it worth $8,000. I better get something that I can go back and, you know, see this ROI within 30 days, or I'm going to be upset. You know, I, I didn't think that way. All I thought was how can I go to this mastermind and, uh, make a difference to somebody like John Lee Dumas. Cause like we were, like you were talking about the dude, you know, pulls like four or $5 million a year. Um, just chilling. Like his top line, bottom line revenue are so similar because it's all podcasting revenue. So like if he makes 5 million gross, he's like netting 4 million, you yeah, know? Right, right, right. So 
Um, so he's a, a brilliant podcaster, really, really smart businessman. And, um, so he has, he has a lot of money. He, you know, has a beach house in Puerto Rico. Like what, what I'm not, I, how can I help him there? I can't really help him there. He has a bunch of connections. He's interviewed literally the best of the best, the Tony Robbins and, you know, Tim Ferriss's and Gary Vaynerchuk's and Grant Cardone's of the world. He's in He had them all on their podcast. I don't have any connections that he doesn't have, you know, the, the, what, what can I, what can I offer somebody like that? And so I, I was just looking for that opportunity the whole weekend instead, you know, that, that was the main, the main reason I was there was for that. Obviously I learned a lot from him that I implement implemented in my podcast and my, into my business strategies. But the main, the main reason I was there is to try to figure out a way that I could help out somebody like John Dumas so that he would be a proponent of what I'm pushing forward. And, um, uh, we were talking one night, he was talking about a event that he, that he had coming up where he was keynoting and, uh, he has this physical uh, journal. It's uh, the Freedom Journal, the Mastery Journal that he sells. And he was like, I have a guy that's going to be working the booth. And um, he was like, I was wondering if you could just sit down with him and train him for like 15 minutes since, you're, since you've done a lot of sales or whatever. And I was like, John, I'll just work the booth for you if you want, man. Like, uh, that's not, it's not a problem. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll go sell some journals for you. He was like, oh, really? That'd be so awesome. That'd be, that'd be really cool. I really appreciate that. So I went and represented him in at, at, at this first uh, conference and then went really well. So he invited me to another conference, mm. um, which was Thrive, which is put on by, uh, by Cole Hatter um, in, in Vegas every, every fall for the past couple of years. And uh, while we were there, uh, we were selling journals for, for, for John and everything like that. And, um, and then John... Uh, took a picture of me and him, sent it over to Nicole and was like, Hey, meet my buddy, Travis. Um, and, uh, he's really interested in, in a couple of things that you have going on. And through that, I actually ended up joining Cole's mastermind and joining Cole's mastermind has opened up the door to be able to talk to a lot of people. Cause obviously Cole knows a lot of people through having them speak on his stage at thrive that Jack Canfield's Gary Vaynerchuk's Grant Cardone's Ty Lopez, like, like all these other people that have come in spoken on his stage. And now Cole's making those connections for me to have those people on my podcast and all of this branched off from just that one simple mindset shift. So going into the situation in Puerto Rico thinking, what can I give to somebody like this instead of how can I make this worth my money? It was, it was just that one mindset shift that I can point back to that allowed me to cultivate so many, so, so, so many connections. And that's what I was talking about um, earlier in the conversation about like, if you, if you did well with the, who, you know, um, there'll, there'll be, you can look back and see just an exponential leap yeah. in, in, your, in your network. And that's exactly what happened to me this past year. I went from knowing zero people in this influencer space to now having, you know, this conversation with you, Matt, to now having Brad Lee, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, people like that on my interview schedule as we speak to get them on my show that, that, that like literally none of this would have been possible if I didn't have that one mindset shift going into that, into that conversation. Puerto Rico. Yeah. But let me, let's, let's get down to brass tacks on it, my friend, because there's actually a little more than what you just said thank you for sharing the story i dig it but there's more you rolled eight grand that's how mm. it started you went there but if you didn't have the eight grand that may not you had the eight grand which then triggered how do i get value from this event you twisted your version of value some people say i get value because i'm sucking it you said i'm going to get value by listening feeling absorbing allow karma to tell me which problem i can solve for him but the fact of the matter is if you didn't pony up the eight bills to go to Puerto Rico, it wouldn't have happened. So, mm, so how right. does somebody get comfortable with stroking the check? Look, I believe of this old saying, it's warmer near the sun, right? Mm. And so mm. once you to figure out through clarity who the sun is, your dream 100 is, <laughs> yeah, right, how, how right. do we get warm? How do we get yeah. to them? And I believe yes. you may have to pay. And so if somebody doesn't have eight grand, guess what? You ain't going to Disney World that year. Because if you're crystal clear <laughs> on the future, you're saying to your spouse, we ain't going. I'm going to Puerto Rico to meet John Lee Dumas. And your spouse might give you a hard time and say, no, you're not. We're going to Walt Disney World because she's only looking at today. Tough right. stuff. Right. We're this is really the nuts and bolts of how networking gets built. You've got to be yeah. able to spend to get close to the sun. Yeah, I think, and exactly what you just said, a lot of times like people will look at that and they'll be like, well, I don't have $8,000. And it's like, well, you, you do, you, you do have $8,000. You just haven't figured out how to prioritize this relationship building thing over these other things that you want to spend money on. You know, like if you, if you don't have, if you don't, and, and this was obviously like a little bit more pricey of, a, of an entry point for somebody that if you're, if you're really struggling, if, if you have like no, if you, if there's no way you can make $8,000 work because you're making like 2K a month or something like that, like that's different. So you can start at a lower, you can start at a lower level. Like you don't have to start at the $8,000 mark. That's just where I started because I wanted to just like, 
you know, ignite my, 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 uh, my network. So mm-hmm. if, if that's not you, you can start with these things that are like $2,000 or $1,500 and everybody can afford something like that. Um, if you do not already have a networking budget, you 100% should make a networking budget in yeah, 2018. Man. Yeah. Uh, money that money that off of your income that goes into a separate account that is solely for the purpose of meeting people, whether it be at an event, whether it be at a mastermind, a mentorship program, a way to get into um, uh, a conversation with people that are are above the level that you are on. Um, And you should have that networking budget. So if you're making 50 grand, then it's probably not going to be a $10,000 budget. You know, it might be a a, a $2,500 budget, but that $2,500 will help you get in front of people to increase your income so that next year you can have a $5,000 budget or a $10,000 budget. And um, I encourage people to stretch themselves as a little bit more than they think they can, yeah. um, because I think it's so, so, so important. Like I drive a Corolla, Matt, like, you know what I mean? Like I've, I've been driving a Corolla for the last six years, you know, so, and I've spent like 30, 35, almost $40,000 on personal development, masterminds, coaching, all that yeah. kind of stuff within the last year and a half, you know, but I drive my Corolla, but Dude, people clarity. don't want to drive the Corolla. People go drive the, the Corvette or people go drive the, the BMW and they, you know, leverage themselves and not now they don't now they actually don't have any money to go spend on these things because they're spending money into their car so like don't tell me you don't have the money like just come up with different priorities and you can find the money strong mindset love it travis so how many people were in puerto rico when you went uh there were four other people so it's yeah. me and four other people but that's what eight grand gets you eight grand gets you right. the the elitist that's mm-hmm. the wrong terminology i shouldn't have said that what i meant to say was the the I said elitist, but not in the form that most people might think. What I meant was you you, you separated the wheat from the chaff at eight grand, Mm -hmm. right? Right. And so you could get real close to the sun because you knew even if it was a huge sellout, there was still only going to be 10 or 12 people. So you knew you were going to get John Lee Dumas time, right? Yep, exactly. And that that goes to your point about, listen, stretch. Because mm-hmm. you're not gonna you're, you're gonna spend three hundred ninety nine dollars for the real estate seminar in your local Holiday Inn. It will not be the same experience. <laughs> exactly. Right. We've exactly. all done that. Though. But by the way, I think that's yep. part of the process too of of learning. Yeah, figuring this stuff out. Yeah, yep. exactly, exactly. Figuring figuring out that that four hundred dollars isn't uh, you know it's got it's not gonna do much as far as like long term uh, getting you on the level that you want to be. So here's the rub. You're a sales guy. I'm a sales guy. A lot of people listening are salespeople as well. So we kind of know how to get in the door. We kind of know how to get to Puerto Rico. We know how to do the pay to play. Then to me, it gets complicated, right? Because you asked him what problem you could solve, but there still had to be more. So did you feel uncomfortable when you said, let me just work the booth? Because there had to be an element, help me this, I don't want to put words in your mouth, of, geez, if I work the booth, then I actually kind of do get closer to him. And then how do I leverage that favor for a favor from him? How do we handle Hmm. that emotional sort of one hand washes the other piece? Yeah, I think that um, taking yourself out of the situation, whenever I'm, whenever I'm trying to make like an intense decision like that in a, you know, within a couple of minute time frame from, from, you know, cause I had to make that decision from the time that the words came out of his mouth <laughs> until the time that I actually said something. So um, I, I try to take myself out of the experience and look at it intrinsically, look at it without the emotion involved because, you know, emotionally it was like, Oh yeah, I'll do it for you because I, that was like the in that I was looking for, but yeah. you take yourself out of the situation and, and look at it from, you know, this other perspective. It's like, okay, does this make sense? can I deliver, you know, because what happens if I'm like, yeah, I'll do it for you. And then I suck, (laughs) you know, and then, and then it kind of backfires on me because then, you know, he doesn't want to introduce me to other people because I'm the one who screwed up his booth at at, at this, at this conference. So, um, there was a couple of things to consider, but overall I was confident enough in my sales ability and knew that I'd done this so many times in the past and, uh, and knew that I'd be able to deliver on it. So, um, so it was just a, it was just a really quick, you know, like as soon as I, as soon as I thought that, as soon as that like little doubt came in my mind that my, my confidence took over and it was just like, you know what, I've done this, I've done this hundreds of times in the past. I can do this again. And, um, and this is exactly what I've been looking for. So, uh, yeah, that. yeah, of course there was a little bit of like hesitation, but, um, you know, ultimately it was, it was a perfect situation for me. So let's talk about it. You do the thing, you do the booth for him, Travis mm-hmm. goes well, and then it's crickets, man. You don't hear from him. 
He maybe he you know, he doesn't send you a thank you card. He doesn't reach out to you. He doesn't tap you on the shoulder and say, "Hey guys, look at my man Travis." Mm -hmm. How do you get back on his radar screen then? I uh, still be a proponent. Um, influencers love when people push their stuff. Right. So like if they have a product, a service, a, a, a program uh, or a, just a podcast, you know, sharing their stuff, getting in their Facebook groups, um, talking them up to other people in their Facebook groups, stuff like that. Like they'll notice stuff like that. Almost almost every influencer now has a Facebook group that you can join. So join their Facebook group and push their stuff out and uh, talk them up in their Facebook group and they'll start noticing that. You know, even if they only engage in there once a week, they see your name pop up all the time. It's like, oh, there's Travis again talking something good about me. That's awesome. Fantastic. Really cool. Oh, he sold another Freedom Journal to his next door neighbor. Okay, really cool. You know, thanks a lot, man. And then you ask, you know, now that now that he knows who you now that that person knows who you are, I, I think that's totally reasonable to have an ask to to say something. Uh, something really, really simple along the lines of just either shoot him an email or do it in person, but say something really simple along the lines of, Hey man, so I've, I'm always looking to up level, you know, who I am and get better. If I have a quick question or anything like that, that you can just take a couple of minutes. Do you mind if I shoot you an email um, whenever I run into something like that? Um, and he try to keep an open line of communication. That's the, that's the most important thing is keeping an open line of communication with this person. Um, because if you do one thing and then you close that communication, then you don't have any reason to talk anymore yeah. but if you ask them like literally just ask them most people just won't ask they feel so they i don't know if they i don't know if it's a i don't i really don't know if it's if like they they undervalue themselves matt or what exactly if it's imposter syndrome like really trying to like come to the surface i don't know exactly what it is but people just won't ask influencers for things they're just people just ask them for a quick like a quick favor like hey man like i'm not i'm not asking you to you know coach me one-on-one -on -one every day for three months i'm asking like hey if i run into like a quick issue or problem something that i could use a little bit of advice on do you mind if i shoot you an email about it yeah and most people like that especially after you've done something that really helped them out and made them money and did something like that they'll be like oh yeah for sure man whenever you need something hit me up you know now you have an open mind of communication with that person and that's the most important thing dude it's big everybody farts i mean people need to understand <laughs> that everybody farts we're all the yep. same people we're freaking humans it doesn't matter whether you have the jet or you or you don't have the jet we are all mm -hmm. human beings i think that's a great way to, to uh to approach it even though it is kind of crude here's one last thing that i need to get your opinion on and, and strategy on because um because i believe like jim Rohn used to say people of interest do interesting things you mm -hmm. you have to do something cool in order to really get on an influencer's uh, radar screen or mm -hmm. this person who moved up. And so where does the coolness come from? It could be that you're a great ping pong player. And so mm -hmm. you see them at that mastermind or something smaller and you see a ping pong table and you say, let's go, let's play ping pong, right? Connection. You play piano and you can play Billy Joel at the Christmas party. Knock yourself mm -hmm. out, right? Um, I do these crazy cold water swims in freezing cold water. Right. I mean, it's just it's something to talk about. But here's what's funny. When 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 I had recently I was at this dinner party with a friend of mine and he invited some other people and uh, and this guy was talking about being uncomfortable. I said, you know, I like to get uncomfortable, too. He said, what do you, what do, you do? I said, well, I like to uh, do these cold water swims like there's no water too cold for me, like Wim Hof kind of stuff. Right. There is mm -hmm. literally no water. I mean, and and there will come a time, I think, sometime where, you know, I, I actually sort of hustle the group and say, you know, oh man, that water is 38 degrees, you know, and you know, I'll mm. pay you a thousand bucks, dude. I'm in my underwear. I'll do it. There is no water that's too <laughs> cold, right? I've conditioned my mind to enjoy that process, but here's my point. Yeah. The other guy at the dinner table goes, yeah, I, I like to get uncomfortable too. So really, what do you like to do? He's like, I like to do these, you know, adventure races and stuff. I go, really? Like what? What, what are you talking about? He's like, like 150 mile adventure races, you know? And I said, no kidding. I mean, how many have you done? And he's like, I've done like 80 of them. So here I am swimming in cold water in my pool thinking I'm doing something of interest. And this guy's run like 80, 150 mile adventure races, throwing up all over himself, peeing on himself, pooping on himself, Goodness. his kidneys shutting down, right? Wow. So you have to you have to be careful not to take yourself too serious when you're doing your person <laughs> yeah. of interest development, you know? Definitely. But my, my point Definitely. is you gotta have you gotta have a few shticks, man. You gotta have something that yeah. you are pretty good at or or do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the who you know brings opportunity. The what you know allows you to capitalize on that opportunity. So, um, and it doesn't have, you don't have to be like an expert, you know, uh, you know, 
deep sea fisherman to have an interesting story. You know what I mean? Like just getting out and doing things will allow you to, you know, so like last year, for instance, was, was the year that I built my network, like the most I ever had just exponentially to where I went from knowing absolutely nobody to so many awesome uh, people that have, that have helped me up level myself. Um, but it, I also went to like 11 countries last year, you know, and I, and I also was, uh, traveling around a bunch the year before we did the Spartan race trifecta, you know, like, uh, these, these are just different things that you can now like take into a conversation with somebody like somebody like that. And now you have something to talk about. You have, you have something, like you said, something interesting, something differentiating, like, Oh, that's the dude with the Spartan, the, the, the Spartan races or that. Yeah. That guy, uh, he, he put this video together on his trip to central America. Check this out. Like yeah. this is pretty cool. You know, like the, yeah, so having something exactly like you said is, is going to help you capitalize on those opportunities a bit better. So Travis, as we, as we get close to close, I'd like to ask your opinion, give me the uh, foolproof follow-up strategy after you've done it, you've, you've done the person of interest, you made the connection and then it sort of dies off a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering, how do I get back on their screen? You sent them a text. They didn't reply. You sent them an email. They didn't reply. You like their stuff. You asked them a question on social and it went, it went crickets. How do you re-engage? What's a strategy? Um, yeah. So if there's a couple of things here, first of all, um, find somebody that, you know, that knows them to intro you to re-intro you. So re like intro. You, now we already were intro, re we already sort yeah. of had engagement and then it died. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, saying so bring it, it back around. Right. Exactly. So because what happens is people get really busy, right? So if they have, you know, a dozen emails in their inbox, that are all saying something, they might not even realize that you were the person that they connected with before. Yeah. They just don't have time to answer all those emails right now. So it just gets to the bottom of their inbox, right? So your goal is to stay up at the top of their inbox. And so if they see an email come in from somebody that they know that they recognize the name, it's just it's like, Hey, this is my buddy, Travis. He has this podcast called Builder Network. I just want to connect the two of you because I think that, you know, it'd be a good connection. Um, and, uh, you know, happy connecting, whatever. And then they peace out. Now you're back into a conversation with that person. They're like, Oh yeah, that's right. I, you know, I did connect with you at that one thing. Okay. Yeah, cool. Cool. How's it going? You know? Um, so first of all, look for uh, reintroductions from people that you might already know. Um, but also, um, you have to think about it and, and real quick too, on, on the, on the previous point, it has to be a long-term game by the way. So like people are really short term. They're like, Oh man, I, I didn't, you know, I, you know, I, I, reached out to Grant, he said something back and now he never said anything back to me. And then they, they do this, they try to do the reintroduction thing, but they're like, but I don't know anybody that knows Grant, this is stupid. And it's like, no, 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 like go find somebody and like get to know that person that knows Grant. It might take six months, but the bottom line is like, it's gonna take, it's never gonna happen if you don't take the action, mm -hmm. right? So like either, either it's either six months or like never. So pick one mm -hmm. and take the actions necessary to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So so uh, look for reintroductions and, and make sure you're thinking about it long-term. It's not a short-term game. Um, but then, but then also the other thing is just to be persistent. Um, I, that's just the, the one thing it, it's such an obvious answer and I hesitated even saying it because it's so obvious, but I, it's so important because I, I, you know, this being, you know, in sales and stuff like that, the, the statistic is like 60% of salespeople give up after the first no, um, or something like that. And so, um, I think being persistent and staying top of mind is, is equally as important. There was one lady that I was trying to get on my podcast for a while and she said, no, she said, no, she, she, she actually never said no, but she kept putting it off to where, you know, it's basically a no, you know? And, um, so eventually I just sent her a video. It was on Instagram and I Instagram direct message. I sent her a video. I was like, Hey, look, um, I was like, and, and you do it with a smile on your face, you know, you're not going to be a, you know, a douchebag about this, but, um, just be friendly, have a smile on your face. But I just said something like, Hey, look, I, I'm super excited to, to talk to you on my podcast. And I was like, the bottom line is I'm probably just going to keep asking until we just do it. <laughs> yeah, so I, love I, love I was that. like, we may as well just do it right now yeah, because like, or else you're going to just keep getting messages from me like once a week. Yeah. But I said it exactly like that. So I said it like laughing, joking in a jovial type of way, not in like a creepy way. Like I will hunt you down type of a thing, you know? Um, but uh, literally like three days later, um, she got, she, she scheduled to be on my, uh, to be on my show. Yeah. Um, and I think just being persistent is, is, is so undervalued these days. It's a great um, tip. Dude, I say it all the time in the sales world. I mean, I, I call people all the time and I simply say to them, look, you didn't call me back three, four, five times. It's mm. absolutely no problem. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Just do me a favor. 
pick up the phone. It will not be an uncomfortable return phone call. And just tell me your decision. I have mm -hmm. a, a very close friend of mine. He's a vendor of ours. I love the guy. He's one of the most aggressive, intense guys I've ever met on the planet. And he calls relentlessly until he gets what he wants. And when he leaves me voicemails, he says, I am not apologizing for calling you again. I will continue to call me until we, we talk about this. And there are no hard feelings, right? The reality is most people think the other person, and you're referring to them as influencers, whatever they happen to be, they think their lives are like your lives. And the reality mm -hmm. is they're not. They're very different. They're mm -hmm. not scrolling their Facebook feed, checking all the likes and the notifications. They're, they, they have 50 unreturned or unanswered emails. Their mm -hmm. schedule is completely booked, right? So it's not the same existence. And you've got you to have a lot of the things we've talked about today, particularly this clarity thing as to why you're doing it. I'd like to add one other thing to it is there has to be a level of humility. Because mm -hmm. if the other person, they, they already have all the leeches sucking on them all day long. You, and I just had this uh, call recently with someone, I, a, a, a major influencer who I become very good friends and I just called them I was out getting a cup of coffee solo like three days ago four days ago and they just popped in my head I called them they pick right up and uh, I said what's going on I said man you know what I'm doing I'm just calling to do something that I know nobody else has done in a while I'm just calling to say hi everybody else I guarantee has been sucking on your titties calling you asking you mm -hmm. for something and I'm just calling you to tell you I got no ask I'm just calling to say hi and it was I mean, you could just feel the weight of his long day and the pressure just come right out of him. And he just said, mm. I'm so thankful you called to say that, man. I needed that. Yeah. Yeah. No That's such game. a fantastic practical tip. Yeah. Fantastic tip. Yeah. But to, you have to, to actually, care. You got to actually care. care. Exactly. To exactly. Be able to make that call. Actually care. Yeah. Be genuine about it. Right. Not like, <laughs> so if you're listening, don't take this advice in order to get what you want, <laughs> you know, like it has to come from the, the, the only way it works is if it's genuine, true caring about people. Yeah. That's what, that's the, like the number one tip I give to people though, Matt is like, stop being this fake, this like business, like stop being a, like, be a person, be an actual person, build friendships with people. Stop, stop having this, like, like the, the, you should be, you should be doing the same thing in networking event that you do at a bar. Like you should just be chilling and hanging out and talking about stuff. But why do why are you trying to make it all weird by like pitching your business and throwing your card in my face? Like, let's just be friends here. Like we can, we can work out something later if something great happens, but like bottom line, let's just be normal. Be a person. Dude, we started the conversation on that exact sort of genre. I, I just didn't get it. I was coming from such a place of weakness for so many years. I just thought I had to steal and take and scrap and fight from the marketplace until I understood mm. to put out a different energy. And mm. what you put out is what you get. And yeah. so as I began to put out a different energy that said, I feel pretty good about myself now, man. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all right. I'm like, I'm not too far different than you, buddy. Right? Yeah. I right. got kids too, man. I got a wife. I got problems <laughs> at the office too, and it's all the same shit. It's just, I may right. not have a jet like you do, but I ain't doing too bad either, pal, right? <laughs> so w w once I began to get that self-confidence to flow out, mm -hmm. a much different energy started to come back. Yep. So. Yep. Confidence is the, that's where I always start with, with, with when I'm coaching people is you have to have that level of confidence and uh, that's a whole nother topic of conversation. And there's so many ways to, to boost that up, but I'm sure we don't yeah. have a lot of time to dive into that, but um, another great topic though. But here's what we do have Travis. And I'm grateful for you today because I knew at the minute we jumped on the call today, I knew that you were interested in helping the audience as much as I am. And in order to do that, we have to give real fundamental takeaways. And I want to mm -hmm. thank you because I think literally, and I've, I've made eight uh, bullet points here of legit takeaways, and there's more. There's probably 12 or 14 legitimate takeaways, game-changing takeaways for the listener to be able to put one or two into play and be able to actually make change. So I want to thank you for that level of transparency and care that neither of us are in this for some you know, clandestine motive. We're literally trying to deliver content that the audience can benefit from. And I'm very grateful for that from you. Matt, I really appreciate you having me on, man. I really, really enjoyed the conversation a lot. Cool. Travis, I will see you down the road, man. Thanks for your time today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Appreciate it. That's our episode this week with your host, Matt Monero. Check us out every Friday at 12 p.m. Central as we discuss money, your life, and how you need more money. <laughs>